All right, gentlemen, let's talk about the Jock Nina, but job well done. As you said, he's been with the box uh, 2018, turned it around him and, and, uh, and Rossi. <sighs> where to from here for SA Rugby? In terms of where to look locally in what we have, who would be the next South African to take over as head coach of the Springboks? I think uh, we, Rossi is director of rugby or director of coaching, whatever he calls himself now, until 2025. And so he's involved, obviously, in the decision-making process with the CEO. So um, uh, Zondili Stick is, is, has been with him for the last eight years. He's been absolutely uh, a part and parcel of that, uh, of that Springbok coaching setup. And, um, you know, he would, be, he would be a candidate. I can't see them going outside South Africa. Um, he really understands the way that um, Rossi and Jacques work. Uh, he's, uh, he's a very impressive individual himself. He did uh, really well when he coached uh, under, the under-21s uh, at EP, won the league, and uh, a sevens coach, sevens player, strong personality. Players respect him. So, um, it, it, you know, it was Jacques leaving, Rossi uh, as director. Um, it, it, it's really who will come in and, and, and assist him if they decide to go as one DD. And, and uh, you know, maybe you know, someone like Akers coming back with the Fords. I don't know whether that works. <laughs> you as a tech coach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks for that, Nick. <laughs> Gentlemen, uh, from, from what we have at the moment, South Africa, a South African could take over the Springbok job? Yeah, I think Sticky's been set up for it right from the start. So I think it's been a process with him. Entrenched in the system, knows Rassi's ways very well. Um, we would have to obviously get a defence coach and a name like Joe Mongala comes um, forward for that. And then, yeah, I'd agree, a guy like Akers is a forwards <coughs> coach and Swayce is a tech coach. You guys are kind. <laughs> yeah. No, I think, you know, Rassi would have a way of building a very strong unit around Stick. Um, but I certainly would think he'd be the wise choice. Yeah, you know, I, just with as far as Stick is concerned, I was working with him in my stint there with him. What a guy. What a worker. Mm -hmm. You know, and, uh, and the players respect him. I want to throw another name in there, thinking this morning about the whole thing, and that's Dion Davids as well. Mm. You know, as a, as a leader, very respected as well. He is the fourth coach. And uh, so I, I like the fact that they, if, if they can, look inside. Because, you know, we've got such a diverse... Uh, our country is different. Uh, we want someone from us, within us, who understands the value systems of the box and what they do and going forward. So that's... Two or a couple of guys there that's really come through the, the pipeline in the system and, and they'll do us pride. You know, with Rossi's leadership, I can't see us go wrong. And then just my accolades on Jock as well. Guys, what a brilliant guy, defense coach, <coughs> hard worker. Uh, was an honor to work with him. One little concern, if I can come in here, a little bit of a concern with, with, with him going overseas to a very, very attacking sided mind team yeah. from Michael Cat and I followed their, their stuff rigidly the last couple of years because they do stuff d uh, differently. You know, they've got the same string, but they'll, uh, they're like other teams, but they'll, they'll add one or two fundamentals, which is brilliant. So are they going to lose their DNA or is he going to focus just on, on the defense side? That we don't know. We don't know if he's going uh, in Stuart uh, Lancaster's place, who's going to <coughs> Racing 92, is it? Yeah. So we, we're not so sure the role is going to be. It will just be interesting for me because I want to share it now with you guys. One of, uh, the, as much as I respect Jock, it was always with me and him a battle. I wanted to attack all yeah. day. They wanted to defend all day. <laughs> and every meeting they say attack, at, I say attack, attack, attack. They said no more attack, just defend, defend, defend. <laughs> so he's going now to a very uh, attack-minded side. I just had to get that off my chest. Uh. Um, Jacques Nienaber, Springbok coach, open invite from Final Whistle. When the dust settles, please come chat to us before you head off to, to, to Ireland. Just come chat to us and celebrate what you did for Springbok Rugby, where we come from, where we are. You've been involved with us from the juniors. Are you going to do defence? Are you going to get enough time for attack? What's, what is it going to be? Uh, just let us know. Nick, you, you wanted to add on Yeah, time. just <clears throat> when we were talking about... Um, about the new head coach, uh, probably what's, what's really important is who he would like as his assistants. So it's all very well us sitting yeah. here saying, what about that guy, what about that? The most important thing is that the head coach must choose his own, his own assistants and he must feel very, very confident in their ability and also that he must trust them implicitly because that is such a high profile job and you need close mates around you, yeah. assisting you and making sure that you're giving the Springboks the very best that, uh, that uh, you know that they deserve as uh, one of the as the best team in the world uh, we're world champions going into the world cup we've in the top three so i think that that's the key thing whoever they appoint as head coach allow him 
the, uh, the right to choose his assistance. So, so I mean, listening to, to your point is invalid, valid. I mean, you talk with Ron Lestick, Johan Ackerman coming back. And you, and you touch on the fact that the head coach must be in charge to choose his own team to, to work with. <coughs> Names comes to my mind here. Yeah. guy like Franco Smith think he's done exceptionally well with Glasgow. Maybe an, an option. I and mean, we, we just speculate. We don't know what Ace mm -hmm. procedure is going to be. And, and something sticks out here. None of you guys are mentioning a non-South African to take over the Springboks. Is it not time, maybe, to build a game, to see it differently? Because, you know, what, what Rush has brought in, and, and for the first time we've got a director of rugby, there's the bomb squad, where we were in 2019 to where we are. If we do not evolve, somewhere along the line, people are going to catch up. And they are catching up slowly. And, and listen, we, we've done exceptionally well, won the World Cup, but you need to keep evolving. And I'm thinking, maybe an outside voice, just, just to come in where, yeah. you know, on what Sway says, we are, we are a particular nation here. We are a very complex nation, and yeah. I think you need someone who's grown up inside this nation to understand all the various cultures, to respect all those cultures, and have the ability to make them feel included. And I think that's probably this, one of the strongest things that Jacques and Rossi have done, yeah. is that everyone who's gone into the box setup feels as though they're there on merit, and they're going to be used for their potential what they what they've shown uh, for their own franchises they're going to be used with the Springboks to do exactly that and uh, and that that creates you know a very very tight bond between uh, between the players they trust the coaches yeah. so getting someone in from outside who's got a, a philosophy about how to play the game you know is not bad I suppose as a, an assistant coach but as your head coach yeah. I truly believe you need a South African there mm. Yeah, I agree 100% with that. I think the consultancy is coming out, which Rassi has done with a few yeah. uh, various mm. pers pers personas, but certainly from a head coach role, um, a guy that's integrated, it's part of South Africa, uh, being born and bred, yeah, I think is vitally important. So just the way we, we all sort of coexist yeah. um, is very different set up to anywhere else in the world. So. I think they said it very well. Yeah. I want to add Dobbo, though. You know, he's, he comes, he did so well. He's got, he's, he's, he comes with that, almost that uh, liberal, the right word. You know, he's not a conservative guy. He's not, you will come and challenge him the whole time. Let's play, let's go, let's go. And he's done well. Dobbo has taken a lot of players that the other unions yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't really want Owen. And we can go through those names and he did very well with him. So he can mold a team. He brings another component of, uh, if we throw names in the pot, yeah, yeah. he's definitely a guy that I really rate uh, professional. He knows the in and the outside of, of the game and he comes with a different angle.